Hey, fun fans. To get you pumped for infinite recharge, our friends at West Coast Products have provided a giveaway of a Spartan number 25 or number 35 chain tensioner. To enter, be a YouTube subscriber and let us know in the comments your top prediction for infinite recharge. You can enter in any video that has this intro and the winner will be announced in the fun discord on Saturday, January 4th. So make sure you comment below. First Updates Now videos are brought to you by Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers, internships, and co-ops. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to learn more. Let's move on to our top three. Um, someone asked in chat earlier uh, who the highest single team was, and it is this team here, Team 183. Um, so Brian, why don't you start us off talking about them? Yeah. Team 183 Super Strange from Kevin. He's competed in a lot of catathons, I think. Um, and it really shows this robot is actually crazy. He's got some insane detail. Honestly, I still don't really know everything that's going on on this robot. I, like It's got so much intricate parts and mechanisms. Um, it just seems like it would... It looks like 118 made it in six weeks and not one guy in a weekend. Um, but it's really cool. It has a lot of interesting mechanisms. So it's got a huge spring that activates its shooter with um, variable uh, tension. The only thing I had wrong with that is I don't think the pistons that release that spring are strong enough. And I think that's because they're separately actuated. One side could end up actuating and another one would get stuck and your shooter would break. But other than that, I mean, it's got some weird bars going on too. Like, they're bent in weird shapes, and I think that would be hard to manufacture. But other than that, it's a lot of detail. Everything works. Fasteners are in. Gears are meshed. Sprockets are sprocketized. Everything's great. I gotta say, the rose gold for this is... I love it. I've never even thought about using that color scheme on a robot, and I, I love it, love it, love it. Uh, seeing the massive spring in the middle, it's really cool. Kind of funny, just reminds me of uh, <laughs> when a 118... You know, used a, a big old cylinder uh, instead of a spring in their robot cat, and that ended up inconveniencing um, another team who tried to copy their robot. Didn't realize that was a spring and not just a big old metal cylinder. So that's just <laughs> kind of funny to see. Um, I like the rollers they're using. I'm not entirely sure what um, what the material for that is, but I like them. And then just overall, like the aesthetics of this robot is gorgeous. Probably like the most the best looking robot in the competition for me. Yeah. So I have to say, opening this file, um, I don't think my fans have ever turboed so long before. Uh, it was like, <laughs> if you cross 971 and 118, basically. Uh, there was a lot of detail here. I feel like some of the guards, they said for the pucks, that seemed like unnecessary and overkill. There's a lot of like thick quarter inch plate. And uh, some also, I don't know, I'm kind of dabbling in sheet metal. And it seems like some of those things aren't actually possible. They're not meeting the minimum bend length. So, like, your shop's going to be really mad at you if you ask them to make that. Uh, on the spring shooter as well, uh, I can't figure out how you're actually supposed to load that and how it's supposed to tension. Like, it seems like there's just one or two parts missing. It doesn't totally make sense for that shooter to work. But overall, still incredible detail on all of that metal work. I'm not totally sure how you're going to manufacture some of it, but uh, it's definitely an interesting thing to see in CAD. Yeah, the, uh, the aesthetics of this robot are just really good looking. I really like the look of this robot. Uh, so very, very nice job. Uh, Kelvin, I can't tell if chat's memeing right now. Um, Kelvin, Kevin, nice job being the highest solo team. Um, let's go on to our two spot. Um, you know, this is another great team, and uh, they got second in the last cat catathon as well. Uh, it's the team 296. Uh, Troy, why don't you tell us a little bit about them to start? Muted. They're absolute mad lads, really. They've got a cycloidal gearbox in here that loads up a spring-loaded, like, slap shot shooter. Um, just really neat to see that. The whole thing's on a turret. They've got this, like, big set of hot dog rollers. Kind of reminds me of 254-2017. But that's so they can accept inbounding pucks a lot more easily. Uh, of course, custom swerve drive, because why wouldn't you? Their bumpers also. There's wood, fabric, staples, and noodles inside of the bumpers. <laughs> Even if that's reused, that's like insane detailing on there. Uh, though they were missing a couple things that I kind of docked them for, like missing belts on that that are kind of obvious. 
but it still seems like a very strategically solid robot. And uh, I also noticed that it seems like Simbots have come down to the U.S. team NASA JPL now. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I really like I really like this robot. Um, the flow of the robot is something I mentioned a lot. It reminds me of a one like obviously 118 2017. Um, it's got that roller vibe, and I really think that it would actually perform well. It's like I really like the corner aspect how the shooter's in the corner and they got all that space to catch the rest of the puck and kind of scoop it in. And I like the intake. Um, I think their intake, even though it didn't have any vectored intake wheels or kind of compliancy to it, I feel like it would be, it's really simple, but also could be really effective. I just love the cycloidal. I love cycloidal reductions and I was not at all expecting somebody to in, in incorporate a custom cycloidal gearbox into their catathon bot so that was awesome to see um i so i actually kind of disagree with brian a little bit i actually don't love the fact that the shooter's on the corner i think there's some i think i love the look of the turret sentry i love the aesthetics of it i love that profile but i do think that they might have some issues um just with the physics kind of the the re reactionary torque of launching those pucks from the corner of the robot, I think they may actually have a bit of an issue with bucking the robot whenever it shoots. But like that's so far beyond the scope of Catathon. The fact that we're even talking about that kind of stuff is amazing. So overall, just an incredibly detailed, incredibly creative robot. It was just an absolute joy to look at and judge. Uh, kind of one of my only things here too is uh, I feel like they could have used Swerve just a tiny bit better. Because like if you swapped out Swerve and just made this a tank drive robot, like everything would still work fine. Uh, so like multi-sided intake would have been amazing, but y you really probably don't need it at all. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think there's sometimes a trap of just using Swerve because you can use Swerve and it's Catathon and who cares? Yeah. But it's custom, so. Like, yeah. Yeah, it works. Yeah, uh, re really great looking robot from Team 296. I love the cycloidal gearbox. Uh, and I definitely did not expect to see that. It's just very good looking robot. The aesthetics are definitely there. I really like it. Um, but first place, uh, you got a past cat, I believe a couple past catathon winners on here. Uh, you got team 157 uh, taking the one spot. Cochran, why don't you start us off with them? Team Mentor Built. Um, this was just a phenomenal submission. Um, there's so much detail going on in this robot. There's so much, so there's so many things going on. It's got a really neat, a double elevator that's like mechanically linked, the chain linked together across the two sides. Um, it's got a you know, really large, the, the turret, uh, the elevator turret going on. Um, but right front and center, those mechanum wheels, they put them on backwards. That was the one thing that drew oh. me in, drove me insane. They've got the mechanum wheels on wrong. Those are the wrong direction. That's really the one glaring flaw in this robot. Um, this the render for the swerve module is gorgeous. Um, it's got the pneumatic tubes. It's got the pneumatic fittings for the Falcons. That yeah, that picture right there, absolutely gorgeous. I love that. It's got the Andersons like linked together. So incredibly detailed. Um, that like as soon as I saw that I was like this is this is going to be one of the top rankers for sure, um, and it was it was an absolute delight. Yeah, uh, this robot I agree with Cawthorn on a lot of the comments he made that it has a lot of detail and the dual sided elevator. I think it's going to be going to be easily the quickest scoring robot out of all the Catathon robots. But I got a couple of things that I noticed in the details, um, and even though some of my friends are on this team, I got to roast them. They got. <laughs> issues without tensioning the elevator chain that Cawthon mentioned that connects the two sides. There's no tension on that. Um, the flat, there's, they use flat heads on their elevator to go um, like a little bit lower in their starting configuration, but that catches barely any material on the actual I'm box tube itself. That so that I didn't really think was great. Um, and there's nothing really keeping their mechanism's wheel, mechanism wheels on the hex shaft. They're kind of just floating there. So something I would like to see is maybe some shaft collars or something and i also think that hex shaft is going to easily bend and probably get stuck and um also on the lexan piece that holds their intake there's nothing holding it on the outside so it can literally just fall off its bearing and it's not like you can loctite it onto the bearing or anything like that because it's lexan so it would shatter 
Yeah, uh, going back to that sinking chain for the elevator, I hate that so much. The way they did the tensioning on that and that run is just, it makes me hurt inside. Uh, it's a neat idea, but I don't see it working very well long term. Like, this is FRC. Sometimes you can get away with that. Um, Tyler, yeah, if you, I also, if you want to pull up the, uh, it's the drivetrain picture. Yeah. Is it a good yeah. picture? It it hurts me inside. That one, um, yeah. Yeah. If you zoom in a bit, kind of towards the center, you can you can see what they're doing, and it's like, oh, this is this is sketch. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the also, others, the the uh, labels on the breakers, like that's <laughs> next level. You've got the wires going in from the PDP to the different motor controllers. You've got the can wires, and you've got the specific labels on the breakers. Like, that's an incredible attention to detail. I have to really say, uh, uh, also, this robot, like, when I've looked at it, I'm like, I, I see what you're doing here. There's a lot of stuff on here that's actually, like, mirrored and such so that you don't spend as much time working on CAD. Or at least you spend the same amount of time, but it looks like there's a lot more there than necessarily there was. But that's just, like, that's smart design in general. Uh, so, like, there's the same intake mechanism on both sides. The both sides of the elevator are very, very similar. Stuff like that. <laughs> This is, uh, you know, re really, really crisp design. Uh, I believe on the Swerve module, they had the pneumatic tubing uh, going into the Falcons. That was really cool to see catted up. Um, you know, the breakers, every, the detail is just, it's there. And, I, don't and it's wanna, really... I don't even want to think about how their computers sounded while they were rendering all this stuff. It probably yeah. sounded like jet airplanes trying to take off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The whole oh, house I've got is a, about the shake, yeah. Yeah, I've got one more thing too. They're also geared at six feet per second. I mean, like they've got a decent argument for it, but like this just seems a bit on the slow side for me for some things you might want to do in this game. Yeah, but I overall, mean, that was this is uh, just an incredibly like high fidelity, incredibly detailed, incredibly thorough submission that I just very much enjoyed looking through. Except for the mechanics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um when the elevator goes up to score it kind of reminds me a little bit of bees from last year um yeah yep that was the first thing i thought of when i saw that robot um really really cool design really detailed they definitely deserve the win um so uh you know congratulations to team 157 uh for winning the eighth f4 catathon um, before we go, we'd like to announce the team that will be winning the best implementation of West Coast Products Products Award. Um, so congratulations to Team 207, who is winning this award, as well as a $50 West Coast Products gift certificate um, due to their use of the new West Coast Products Single Speed Falcon Swerve, as well as their use of various VersaPlantary gearboxes. I believe it was called out there were six or seven of the 90-degree drives. Um, as well at in conjunction of their Falcon 500s. Now, uh, speaking of Falcon 500s, uh, let's draw for the winner of the Falcon 500 from West Coast Products. Tyler, who's the lucky person? Yep, once again, uh, the keyword was brushless if you wanted to get on. This is the last chance for that, by the way. Uh, so make sure you do so. Make sure you click on that little follow button up there to be eligible. And of course, subscribers do get five times luck. Don't forget to join the fun Discord uh, as well as follow fun on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, pretty much anywhere you want. Link for Discord in chat as well too uh by the way while we're getting the last entries guys we had tons of people uh step up today uh to uh welcome back the new year uh really do appreciate it keeps us going keeps us making great content really appreciate the catathon too what a great turnout uh we had tonight so we had a lot of people i'm going to go as quickly as possible to go through this um uh, just people who stepped up uh, a lot of prime subs, a lot of bits. So I'm just going to read off names here. Matt, 1511, Elbasa, 21, Red Leader, 342, Bob Zinkoff, my first choice, Scott Gotten. All right. Uh, C. McBride, uh, Make a Muffin, uh, Domicile, 930, Anthony, 3175, Red Leader, 342, Orange Moore, Owen Coyne, AM Boy Scout, RCAT, 51, Dirt Bikers, XZ, Haber of Regrets, Ishano, The Menace, Great Phantom, Delta, uh, Tegan, uh, Data Ninja X, Miklas, Dari, uh, Escassian, uh, Conmaster, Dirt Bikers, uh, Yukadam, uh, Not Deity, Maze of Encryption. Uh, by the way, Connor giving a lot of uh, gifted subs today as well, too. Thank you so much for that. Red Leader, a lot of bits uh, as well with that. So thank you to those who uh, gave bits for that, going back and forth. Ola Zola, some bits. Uh, Kelkins Garrett, uh, Domatech, Robotier5291, Steven uh, Seekoff, 
uh, Cutezer, hey, it's Leo, the gaming robot, Tigger, one, uh, uh, Nick Mathis, 4130, Super MC Matrix, uh, Red Leader, uh, gave out five tier one subs just a minute ago. Holy crap, Red Leader. Uh, and Robo Tier uh, 5291. If I missed anybody, uh, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, if I didn't catch the Ninja X for the bits as well, too. Thank you for stepping up, keeping fun, loud, live, and independent. That's what it's about. We love making great content for you. We love doing the Canathon. Can't wait to do even more during the season as well. So with that said, our winner for the Falcon 500 is Ola Zola takes it. Ola Zola 5818 winning the Falcon 500. Who is that, by the way? I always forget. That's, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, huh? All right. Uh, was, <laughs> screen names are hard to remember for things, but Ola Zola, congrats. Lots of rigged emotes in chat. Clearly rigged it for Ola Zola to win. Uh, and Ola Zola cheers some more bits. So clearly, clearly rigged it for Ola Zola. But congratulations, winning the Falcon 500. Thanks again to West Coast uh, Products uh, for that. Definitely appreciate it. I um, also want to give a big shout out uh, to the Oscar Eye people as well, too, uh, for uh, providing the Oscar Eye as well. Um, and actually, I, f I forget, what is the uh, Oscar Eye actually does have a business with them as well, too. So I, I do apologize because I forget uh, what that is. But go check out Oscar Eye. Go check out WCPRodics.com for a bunch of awesome stuff as we go through here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I kind to uh, repeat what Tyler said. A huge thank you to our giveaway sponsors, uh, West Coast Products and Oscar Eye. And thank you very much to First Updates Now uh, for providing support on with the stream and producing the show. Um, so on behalf of myself and the F4 Catathon Planning Committee, uh, I'd like to thank all the teams for their amazing Catathon creations and to everyone who has viewed or supported the Catathon. Thank you to First Updates Now and our producer Tyler for their support and promotion of the stream. We'll see you next summer with another Catathon and right here with more content from First Updates Now. Good luck to all teams in the upcoming build season, and we'll talk to you later. See you guys. Good luck at kickoff. See you. Bye, teams. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier 2 plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.